All right, thanks everyone. So um, my talk today is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be as technical, but it's going to talk about the business context around a decision to work with NativeScript or a cross-platform tool. And uh, the title is Why NativeScript Demands You Rethink Your Mobile Application Strategy. Um, we uh, did a NativeScript application that you may have seen in the ng-conf keynote, and we worked with Kiva, and we built this uh, prototype of a Kiva application, the microlending company, in about three weeks. And uh, it showed some of the, the benefits of using NativeScript in, in a lot of different ways from a workflow process. Um, for those that don't know, Wrangle is a uh, consultancy and development shop, and we only do JavaScript. And so we've done dozens and dozens of mobile and uh, responsive applications over the last three years, and there's a, a lot of feedback that we've gotten in sort of understanding what the impact of technology choice is on clients. Um, if you want to check out the actual app, it's now uh, available on GitHub slash Wrangle slash Kiva demo, uh, another example of a native script app. But the, the remarkable thing about that process of building that application was that it was 60 frames per second, native transitions, and we were building daily to both iOS and Android. And that had a massive impact on getting feedback, delivering the application to stakeholders, to users, and collaborating on building the application. So over the last three years, uh, mobile applications, we've done a lot. 50% of our work was in mobile. We only do JavaScript. We've pitched Cordova a lot, so we've built a number of Cordova applications. We've turned down native app projects because it wasn't our mission. We've seen why clients have gone to native, why they've gone elsewhere, and we've learned some interesting things. And that's where native script becomes very exciting for us. Because how we build apps isn't just about the toolkit, right? So most people think we're going to build an app, the developers talk, what should we use, what should we build with? But the process has as much of an impact. So it's more like you're got a lot of different things going on, you have requirements, you're delivering to users, it's a, it's a cycle, especially if you're early in agile development shop. So some of the things to consider, what's the user model? So, you know, what's the boundary of the application? Does it cover a crossover into the website, the store, other applications, uh, conversations, how do users find your app, how do they use it, why do they download it? Another way of thinking of it is your user captive. So enterprise applications have tended to use more um, hybrid types of applications because it was sort of part of an entire end-to-end -end user experience and the commonality between the web experience, the mobile web, and the native app were sort of of consideration. Or is the app new and has a purpose of its own? So it's only the app that the user is interacting with. It doesn't matter what happens elsewhere in terms of mobile web and the website. And then what are your user acquisition channels? The app store or other communities? So one of the big challenges is if you're building an app and you've got it built and you've got it shipped, but your website and your mobile web and your other application code base need to be coordinated for creating new value and delivering new functionality, incorporating new, learner, new learnings, you get handcuffed. And you'll see that with a lot of applications, especially native apps, the, the release schedule is, is pretty slow. And then how hard is it to predict user behavior and need? Like how agile do you need to be? What do you need to learn? How often do you need to update the application? And then there's the technical constraints. How important is speed and, and the native experience? How accessible are different teams? What's your budget? Um, what's your update flow and the interdependencies? And so we've run into lots of potential clients who have spent their entire budget on an iOS app and they can't build an Android app. Or they have an iOS team but they can't find an Android team or the reverse. Um, budget becomes, it becomes a consideration but people normally won't compromise budget for you know, the impact of what they're trying to do depending upon what the goals are of the app. And so one way to think of it is if you break down what does application development actually mean? What are we trying to do and how we're trying to do it? What competencies do you need to build an app? And so you're doing market research. You're doing market segmentation. You're looking to differentiate. You're trying to create an amazing user experience, have an amazing design. You want a fast app. You want to learn as you build the app. And you want nativeness. Um, to look at nativeness and speed, you're ignoring a lot of other things that are very important in how you build and, and bring an app to market. If you have to pivot a lot, if you have to build out new features, if you have to simplify your app, these things have a huge impact on usability. And so when you look at how people are sort of, where they're focusing, the nativeness and the speed were big, design was big, but user experience, differentiation, segmentation, market research, and learning tended to be upfront, especially with mobile apps, 
because mobile apps as a process and as an ecosystem have tended to be uh, either you know build one first on one of the platforms and learn from that or you're shipping it out to a agency and the agency tries to do all that up front. It's not a very lean agile approach. And so what competencies do you need to win a market? It's, it's rather different. You want to be doing more market research, learning, segmenting, differentiating, uh, really focusing on the user experience. You want the speed, you want the nativeness, but you want everything else. And this is where you know, native app development is, is actually a horror show because you have to manage all those multiple code bases, multiple teams, and it pushes you towards a waterfall process. The, uh, the issue, though, is like that's fine, but you want to have the best app experience possible. And so there's all these different influences into your app strategy. So if you're building native apps, it's usually pretty waterfall, a problem, elaboration, strategy and budget, design and requirements have already been done. New products tend to be sort of done with a little more design and requirements, a little more fluid. But if you're looking from a build, measure, learn, and you're really trying to d define the problem and create an amazing user experience, you want to bring the problem into the delivery of your application. And if you don't do that, this is your typical mobile project, you can have the most agile team imaginable, but the whole context has been preset. You have scope, budget, schedule, and approval. There's no learning. There's no adjustment. Whereas you really want to get to the point where you're delivering regularly, learning, and having that sort of be the context for building an app and going to market. So what does NativeScript do? What's different with NativeScript, and, and why is it so exciting? So if you look at the cross-platform market, there was this opportunity in Fear Gap. Uh, part of it carried over from 2010 in, in the early days. Uh, but if you wanted to have a sort of high performance and you had you know, real certainty around what you're building, you went with a native app. If you had other pressures on your application, um, you had high content, uh, you know, a lot of content, uh, you had fluidity of the application, you had a low budget, you had missing skill sets, um, you had a number of different channels used, so mobile web was more important. Um, you had highly captive users with multiple touch points, so you could bring them onto the application platform. You know, the difference between a HTML5 hybrid app and a native app might be, you know, percentage points of experience, but that might be enough to sort of sway a user in one direction or another. But if they're already part of an ecosystem that you're building for them, then that doesn't really matter, and you get an amazing user experience. So we've built some great Cordova applications. They work really well. They deliver an amazing user experience, and there was no real issue with that. The uh, markets like uh, you know content, news, media, retail, they all fall into this, and the companies that have a broader ecosystem. But there's still this gap in the middle, and you know what is the best solution for someone who does want to get to market faster? They do want to be able to change. They want to be able to learn. Uh, they want to have a, a quick iteration cycle. And they're feeling like there's this gap. And that's where NativeScript sort of fits in. It pulls, you know, it, it pushes heavily into both directions. So you have a native experience. You're highly, have a highly fluid development process. And uh, your delivery uh, process is, is very fluid. And so now there's really a, uh, it's an area that wasn't really covered well before. You'd be falling into this sort of uncanny valley. Uh, you'd be in this strange area where you weren't sure, you know, you were sort of stuck. You couldn't afford native development and you weren't, you know, trusting to build the application experience you wanted with something like Cordova. Now you have both and this really changes the metrics of how you would define what your stack would be and how you go to market and how you think about all those choices. So the rules, the new rules that are enabled by these sort of uh, native uh, hybrid cross, or these native cross-platform toolkits is you get the speed and the native experience. And so there's no question about that. Uh, you have native transitions, you have 60 frames per second. You have a single code base where appropriate. So you can build faster, get to market faster. Um, one thing that is, a, uh, is actually very fascinating, when you're trying to engage a user base or a client into an agile delivery model, you have split user bases. So you have some people who are on iOS, some of that are on Android. And if you can't engage your client, if you can't engage users on the application, you're not going to get the feedback, and it doesn't really um, deliver the working relationship that you need to have a lean, agile approach. So the single code base, the rapid delivery, being able to actually deliver on both iOS and Android is actually a massive value. 
Um, refine with alternate layouts where appropriate. So similar to responsive and adaptive design, you can have common layouts for a good large percentage of an application, maybe 80%, and then you get into a few areas where you want to tweak it. And so you can go with alternate layouts. Leverage a broader skill set for hiring. You're building a single team that you can take from the JavaScript community. And the big win is you stay lean, you stay agile, and you don't get pushed into a waterfall delivery model. And then there's all these other benefits that were considered before. So what's your time to market? What are the cost savings? Can you share code with the web and mobile web? And faster, more effective user and market feedback. Um, these are very powerful um, influences on what tech stack you would choose. They have a big impact on your go-to-market strategy. They have a big impact on your customer experience. And uh, these are things that we find companies have a hard time moving towards. And so if you want to ship faster, get feedback, engage users, and develop the most effective customer experience, you need to remove blockers. You need to get the application to people. You have to reduce cycle time. You have to reduce the cost of getting an update out there. You need build automation. And you need to be able to work you know, in a, a daily or you know, a couple of times a week at least, getting the feedback and segmenting uh, your user base. The other thing you can do that's very interesting is start doing things like multiple um, experiences for different people. You can build different apps, test features, things that are enabled by a short cycle time. That is almost completely impossible uh, with a, a native development flow. Um, and this is, I think, fundamentally uh, enabling technology for people when building applications. So that's what I had for my talk. I sort of picked it up a little bit because we have uh, a little bit of a time sort of challenge. So um, are there any questions? No, not specifically. Um, the development pace is typically about the same, working with one or the other. Like the, the bulk of what you put into an application is usually the business logic, and so the, the application speed's the same. It's the, when you look at the bigger picture, and these metrics are, are sort of hard to measure, but when you look at your ability to actually uh, change the product, if you want to you know, coordinate across multiple teams, and your ability to actually you know, leverage feedback, um, and scale up you know, your product. I think the, uh, the sense I get is it's probably about a two to one ratio. Um, you had a question? It was Angular 2 and, and uh, NativeScript as a, a mobile app. The the so with with native script we've done the um, the web the mobile app we haven't done the sort of cross channel omni channel though we were working with uh, a client on that but I don't have the metrics on that. Yeah. Yeah, so we use, uh, like, our, our mobile developers have used a ton of different things over the years, like Sencha and Titanium and, and different ones. Uh, we also do React Native development. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you have a, a really strong affinity between your mobile web and your application experience, so thinking of it from the user experience, I think retail is a good example. Um, you, you just get a lot more fluidity in terms of content and, and sort of a cross-channel common experience. So I'd say when you, you get heavily into the content media and potentially retail space. And you'll see that even with some uh, native apps, like uh, native apps often use web views for part of their content consumption. Testing. 
So um, we've switched a couple of times in the last six months. Uh, we use Sauce Labs a fair bit. Um, we're, we're looking at uh, robot uh, framework. Um, I'm not too familiar with the, the testing side as much. Now, if you want to follow up on that, I'd be happy to sort of follow up with uh, answers to that. Any other questions? Oh, yep. Yeah. In what respect? Uh, we haven't had a client switch over, so I, I can't really contrast a single client. The, um, the experience of clients when we're delivering a native script app is uh, much more fluid in the sense of the native transitions and, and the scrolling because it, it's, it's partly the, uh, the context, I guess, so that you know, people are looking for performance and they, they measure the performance and so there's a, a much better sort of feeling um, with that. Whereas with a, uh, a phone gap application, we can achieve similar performance, but people are always a little more concerned. And you do hit more performance barriers. And uh, animations and transitions are you know, trickier, but they can be worked around fairly effectively if you sort of know what you know, CSS best practices to apply. like in terms of so we've done uh, quite a few in infinite scroll type applications um, so from a, a data set not like a massive data set but you know if you're scrolling fast you're pulling a lot of data so managing the DOM and, and the data um, we've done that a few different ways um, we've done some medical applications that have a, a fair bit of data Uh, generally, data is not really an issue, and performance isn't an issue if you take the, the right approach. Like, we've had no issues with performance in our, our PhoneGap Cordova apps. Generally, um, it's just the the extremely sort of high end of the performance and the snappiness and the subtle sort of experiential aspects of it. And so, if you want to achieve a certain look and feel with a lot of transitions, then that really starts to where you'll notice things. But otherwise, like for infinite scroll and, and layouts. Um, there's a lot more thinking you have to do uh, in terms of DOM and DOM manipulation, but if you follow good practices. But that's where it does add up in terms of optimizing, you know, like your, your phone gap applications. A lot of those burdens are lifted off the development team when you're working with uh, native components. All right, thank you. Cool, thanks, Nick.